Yeah, so you have uh, yeah, stop recording for a moment please. Okay, so let me show an example of uh, multimode heat transfer applied to uh, a building. So here we have uh, two rooms, uh, room 1 and uh, room 2, they are at two different temperatures. For example, in this particular case, room 1 is at a higher temperature compared to room 2. Uh, so there will be heat transfer between room 1 to room 2 and the surroundings of the room 1 are also in this particular this thing at the same uh, temperature as the that of the room temperature. That means the air and the surrounding surfaces are of room 1 are at temperature T1. Similarly, the room 2 has surface temperature at T2 and air temperature is also at T2. So, you have two different temperatures and these two rooms are separated by a multi-layered wall. Okay. So, this uh, wall is a multi-layered wall that means it consists of two three layers, layer 1, layer 2 and layer 3. Okay. And uh, here the heat transfer is also by multi mode. For example, look at uh, here the heat transfer uh, uh, heat transfer takes place uh, first by uh, radiation uh, from uh, the surface uh, surrounding surfaces to the wall and also by convection from the air to the wall. So, you have uh, radiation heat transfer taking place and convection heat transfer taking place from uh, surroundings uh, and the uh, air of room 1 to the wall. Okay. So, uh, the radiation and convection will be happening simultaneously. Okay. Then uh, from this point onwards, the heat transfer to the through this wall is by conduction. So, you have initially radiation and convection, then conduction through the wall. And uh, from the wall to the room 2, which is at lower temperature, again the heat transfer uh, is by radiation and by convection. Okay, because uh, you have radiative heat transfer here, because the surface temperature of the wall is different from the surface temperature of the uh, surroundings of room 2. So, you have radiation. Okay. Similarly, this air temperature T2 is different from this surface temperature. So, again you have convection. Okay. So, this is a very uh, uh, peculiar and typical example of multimode heat transfer, uh, which we will be dealing with uh, while doing air conditioning calculations. Okay, so, this is a look at the picture carefully. Now, we can also draw the temperature profile. For example, if this is the temperature T1 of room 1, then uh, let us assume that the, this temperature is uniform in the room, then there will be a temperature drop at this point because of the resistances convective and the radiative resistance, there will be a temperature drop here and there will be a further temperature variation within the wall because of the conductive resistance. So, the temperature profile varies like this. Again from the wall to this uh, room 2, you have again a temperature variation because of the convective and radiative resistances of this room. Okay. So, this is a typical temperature vari uh, variations of the for this particular problem. Normally, we know these two temperatures. And we also know the properties. For example, let us say that we know the properties of the walls 1, 2, 3 that means thermal conductivity, length, uh, areas, etcetera. And we also know for the time being, let us say that we know what is the heat transfer coefficient here, what is the heat transfer coefficient here, what is the radiative heat transfer here and what is the radiative heat transfer here. So, the basic objective here is to calculate the heat transfer rate from this room to the other room. So, we can write a radiation network now. Okay, well, I hope you remember the uh, physical uh, model. We can write the radiation network. Initially, we have the temperature T1 of room 1, then two modes of heat transfer taking place uh, simultaneously. One is the radiation, the other one is convection. So, you have radiative heat transfer and convective heat transfer. We write it uh, in the form of parallel uh, a network with parallel uh, connection because they are happening simultaneously. So, you have two resistances in parallel, one is the radiative resistance, the other one is convective resistance. So, this is the temperature of the surface of the wall inside the room, okay. this is T s 1 and from this point to this point, the heat transfer is taking place through the wall. So, you have three different uh, layers, this is the conductive resistance of layer 1 
conductive resistance of layer 2, conductive resistance of layer 3. Okay, so, the mechanism is uh, conduction and all the resistances are in series. So, so you have a series uh, resistances in series here. So, this is the temperature of the uh, surface of the ball inside room 2. So, remember that at this point again the heat transfer rate, uh, heat transfer takes place parallelly by radiation to the surrounding surfaces and by convection. So, again you have a parallel network here. So, this uh, the whole thing is the a typical uh, heat transfer uh, network for the problem discussed uh, now. Okay. And this, pro this radiation network as you remember from your uh, electrical uh, basic electrical technology, this can be reduced to this form. So, what we have done here is this resistance which is the resistance offered by the uh, radiation and con uh, conve uh, radiation and convection of room 2 can be clipped together because they are in parallel. So, you can uh, find out the equivalent resistance R 2. As you know parallel resistance means if the resistance is as R 1 and uh, R 2. So, you know that R parallel is equal to R 1 into R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. Okay. So, this is nothing but uh, this. Okay. Here R 1 and R 2 refer to radiative resistance and convective resistance. So, what I have done is I have reduced this to a, uh, an equivalent resistance R 2. Similarly, this uh, portion can be reduced to an equivalent resistance R 1. So, we have now three resistances in series R 1, R w and R 2. R w is nothing but the equivalent resistance for the composite wall. Okay. So, this is the resistance simplified in the resistance network for the given problem. So, now what is the total resistance? As you know the total resistance R total is nothing but sigma R. So, here it is simply equal to R 1 plus R wall plus R 2. Okay, so, we can find out what are the individual resistances because we have already given the expressions for uh, radiative resistance, convective resistance, uh, conductive resistance etcetera. And if you have the property data and other data you can find out individual resistances and find the total resistance. And once you know the total resistance you can find out the total heat transfer rate because as you know heat transfer rate is nothing but uh, no, T 1 minus T 2 divided by the total resistance. Okay, so, you can see the usefulness of the network analogy. Okay, the complicated problems can be easily broken down into simple problems. right? And here we have shown uh, the conductive resistances in series. It is also possible to have conductive resistances in parallel. A very typical case is heat transfer through a hollow brick. Okay, when you have a hollow brick, you find that uh, you inside the brick, the heat transfer is in a parallel mode because it is not homogeneous. Okay. So, this is the mathematical this thing whatever I have discussed just now you can write for this uh, multi layered wall q 1 to 2 that means from room 1 to room 2 as t 1 minus t 2 divided by r total where r total consists of these resistances this is the uh, this is the equivalent uh, resistance of the two uh, parallel uh, uh, radiative and convective uh, resistances in parallel for room 2 and this is for the room 1 and this is the, the resistances in series for the wall and this is the total resistance and this is the heat transfer rate. Now, you can write also write the heat transfer rate in terms of uh, what is known as overall heat transfer coefficient. So, you can write uh, either like this or you can also write q 1 to 2 as u a into t 1 minus t 2 where u is what is known as overall heat transfer coefficient. You probably you might have heard of uh, this when you are doing uh, uh, heat transfer calculations. Uh, and when you are when you are when I am comparing this equation with this equation, you find that overall heat transfer coefficient is nothing but 1 by R total into A. So, if you know the resistances, you can calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. The concept of overall heat transfer coefficient will be used very widely when we are designing the heat exchangers. Okay. Now, let me give another example that of a composite cylinder. This is also uh, very commonly encountered. So, here what we have is a metallic tube. Okay. This is a metallic tube through which a fluid is flowing okay. and this is an insulated tube. So, outside you have insulation. right? So, an insulated tube through which a fluid is flowing and let us say that the fluid temperature is different from the surrounding temperature. So, surroundings have a temperature of T naught whereas, the fluid has a temperature of T i. Okay. Uh, then there will be obviously heat transfer depending upon whether uh, T naught is greater than T i as T i is greater than T naught, there will be heat transfer from the fluid to the outside or from the outside to the surface, outside to the fluid sorry. 
and uh, what is the heat transfer rate? The heat transfer rate can be written like this Q is equal to U naught A naught into T i minus T naught where T i is the fluid temperature inside the uh, tube and T naught is the outside surrounding temperature and where A naught is the uh, surface uh, outside surface area of the tube that means surface area referred to the outside surface okay this is A naught okay typically pi D naught into L where D naught is the outside diameter. So, I can write Q as U A into T i minus uh, T naught and what is U? As you know just now we have shown that uh, U is nothing but 1 by uh, R total into A. Okay. So, what are the different resistances here? We have uh, uh, one uh, resistance that is convective uh, heat transfer resistance inside the uh, tube because of the fluid flow and we have one resistance uh, offered by the uh, tube wall and then we have another resistance offered by the uh, insulation. Finally, we have another resistance offered by the outside the convective heat transfer. Okay. So, basically we have the four resistances uh, in series. Okay. So, you can easily find out uh, what is the R total because R total is nothing but uh, summation of uh, inside convective resistance, resistance or con conductive resistance offered by the tube wall, conductive resistance offered by the insulation and convective resistance offered by the uh, outside uh, surrounding air. Okay. So, you can find out uh, R total and from R total you can find out U naught. Once you know U naught, you can find out Q. Okay. So, again you can see what is the advantage of uh, applying um, resistance network and the concept of thermal resistances. Okay. Sometimes what happens is uh, you can have additional resistances. For example, when a fluid is flowing through a tube, let us say the fluid is not very clean. So, it can form a scale inside the tube. Okay. So, that means there can be a scale formation here. Okay. So, what is the effect of the scale formation? There will be another resistance term here because of the scale formation. Okay. Uh, there will be resistance term here because of scale formation here and if you know what is the resistance offered by the scale, you can find out the new overall heat transfer coefficient. Right. So, this is what we have seen is multimode heat transfer. Now, let us look at uh, uh, very briefly. Uh, about heat exchangers. A heat exchanger is a device in which heat is transferred from one fluid stream to another across a solid surface. Basically, uh, most of the common heat exchangers have uh, two fluid streams, one hot stream and the other cold stream. They come in contact through a solid surface. So, there will be heat transfer between the hot stream to the cold stream through the solid surface. This is the typical example of a commonly used uh, what is known as recuperative type of heat exchangers. Right? And, uh, uh, so, as you can see a typical heat exchanger involves both conduction and convection heat transfer and there are a wide variety of heat exchangers used in practice. In fact, there are uh, many, many uh, types of heat exchangers available and you can classify them in a wide variety of ways. So, we will uh, look at the classification and different types of heat exchangers when again we deal with the design of evaporators and condensers. At this point remember that large number of different types of heat exchangers exist. In most of the cases, uh, the heat exchangers operate in a steady state. So, we can apply the concept of thermal resistance and the overall heat transfer coefficients very conveniently. And in general, the temperature of the fluid streams vary along the length of the heat exchanger. The, in the example of multimode uh, heat transfer for a composite cylinder, the temperatures remain constant. That means, outside temperature T naught and inside temperature T i remain constant. So, you have a very sim simple expression Q is equal to U a into delta T. But in a typical heat exchanger, as the fluids flow through the heat exchangers, their temperature varies along the length. Okay, so, you do not have a fixed temperature. So, to take care of this temperature variation along length, uh, a, a mean temperature is defined. This is known as log mean temperature difference or LMTD. So, we have uh, LMTD is introduced and is very widely used in uh, heat exchanger design. So, this LMTD is defined as LMTD is equal to delta T1 minus delta T2 divided by ln delta T1 by delta T2, where delta T1 and delta T2 are the, the temperature differences between the hot and cold streams uh, at the inlet and outlet respectively. So, one can be inlet, then two will be outlet or vice versa. Okay. So, they are the basically the terminal temperature differences between the two fluid streams. So, uh, if you are using LMTD, then the heat transfer rate is simply given by Q is equal to U A into LMTD and this U A you can write with reference to the outside area that means, you can write it as U naught A naught 
or you can also write with reference to inner area that means u i a i. So, this is a typical uh, expression for heat transfer in a heat exchanger and this expression given here that is q a is equal to q is equal to u a into L m T D is applicable for uh, pure parallel flow type of heat exchanger and pure counter flow type of heat exchanger. That means, when a fluid flows in parallel flow or in counter flow, when they flow in crosswise manner then it is not applicable. Okay. Then we have to add another factor which will consider the uh, other uh, flow directions. Okay. These aspects again we will discuss when we are discussing uh, uh, the design of evaporators and condensers. So, let me quickly summarize what we have learned in this lesson. In the present lesson, we have looked at the basic modes of heat transfer and we have discussed the basic governing equations and we have introduced the concepts of thermal resistance and networks to solve uh, steady state multi mode heat transfer problems. And then we have developed analogies between uh, heat mass and momentum uh, and we have also looked at the consequences and usefulness of these analogies. Then uh, we have looked at the basics of uh, heat exchangers. We will be discussing and we will be applying these fundamentals when we uh, do the design of heat exchangers in later chapters. Okay. Right, thank you. This lesson are uh, to discuss methods for producing low temperatures, namely sensible cooling by a cold medium, endothermic mixing of substances, phase change processes, expansion of liquids, expansion of gases, thermoelectric methods, and finally magnetic methods. So, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to uh, describe various methods of producing low temperatures perform simple calculations pertaining to, to these methods and show relevant processes on uh, TS diagrams. Let us start with an introduction. As you know, I have in the very first class, we have defined refrigeration as the process of cooling of bodies or fluids to temperatures lower than those available in the surroundings at a particular time and place. So, this is the exact definition of refrigeration. So, here the important thing is uh, to produce refrigeration, it is essential to produce temperatures low enough for heat transfer to take place from the system being refrigerated to the system producing refrigeration. That means, if we want to produce refrigeration in a particular system A, let us say, then we have to take out heat from uh, system A. That means, we have to have another system B whose temperature is lower than system A, so that heat can flow.